Previously on Kelp's Garage, you guys saw me mechanically sort out my 2002 Mercedes E320 wagon, which changed oil, transmission fluid, tires, axles, ESLS accumulators, and even the battery to fully sort out this wagon after years of neglect. I gave her a good wash and a much needed headlight restoration. It's only been a few days and it's already a huge transformation. So welcome back guys to part two of the wagon series. Now unfortunately it's been quite a long week for the wagon. She's been undergoing quite a bit of repairs. Uh, now unfortunately I had to pull the engine and transmission uh, part due to a catastrophic failure with the transmission. So that all had to come out. You guys will see in a moment uh, the car with the engine out. So I'm sorry, this isn't the detailed video that I said would be coming out next. Uh, this was kind of a little bit unexpected. So let's get into that. The day started out with a nice and simple brake job. We're back with some mechanical repairs this time, not cosmetic. Uh, these were brakes. Uh, they are pretty bad. Hold on, let me, let me show you that. All right, well, whatever. Uh, yeah, so these brakes are pretty bad. Not only are they rusted, well, they were. Now you can see there's still some rust there. They're lipped pretty good. And those pads, can, can you see how much is left on it? It's less than the backing plate. So let me get all this taken apart. All right, well, they came off. Uh, this was stuck on there pretty, pretty good. Yep, that's much better. It's got some of my fingerprints on it, but time to put this all back together. Well, I got the new pads in. See, nice and meaty now. See that right in there? New rotors. I'm slapping this wheel back on. All right, this side's done. I'm going to go do the other side. And after I did the brakes is when the day went downhill. Well, guys, right now I'm in the wagon, and... I am stuck on the other side of town right now. And I was driving and then all of a sudden the RPMs just started pretty much redlining and I lo I completely lost drive. I can free rev. It doesn't do a thing. Um, if it's in drive, it's pretty much like neutral. I have four neutrals right now. The gas won't do anything. I think uh, the transmission is finally done for. So time to get towed back home. So I got picked up by the tow truck and made it back home safely with the now broken wagon. I put the wagon up on jack stands and got to work removing the engine and transmission. Removing the engine was no easy feat since I don't have access to a lift. Unfortunately, I had to undo the suspension again to remove the axles since they run through the oil pan. I was able to remove the engine and transmission the same day and got to work disassembling the transmission. Now, I completely disassembled the transmission, as you can see here. I checked everything here. Everything was completely fine. There was not a single, well, there was a little tiny bit of an issue on one of the steel plates with some pitting. But besides that, nothing in here was an issue. The B3 clutch was fine, but the B2 clutch right here, the clutches are out of it, clutch back, those are over here. Now, I'm sure no one here is a transmission expert and neither am I, but if you take a good look, you might be able to see what's wrong. Or if you know anything about transmissions, uh, the problem is staring at you right in the face. Now, before I show the next clip, I already know that I'm probably going to get some uh, transmission experts telling me that I was saying the wrong thing. These are friction discs. I was calling them clutches by accident. So if I say clutch, I meant friction disc. Now, if you see here, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch. Steel, another steel? Nope. That was a clutch. I say was because this is what's left of it. One side is completely gone. The other side, there's a little sliver left. Now there was another little sliver on the other side, but it just fell right off. It was completely delaminated. Now I found my smoking gun. So this transmission is now in for a complete rebuild. I'm not just going to replace one clutch and risk having the rest of them fail. You know, next one in line. Now, there's a good reason I want to replace all of the friction discs. 
It could have been a manufacturing defect, but if it was, the failure probably would have happened a lot sooner. Now, what I personally think happened is water intrusion. So these friction discs, the glue that holds the friction material to the steel disc, uh, that glue is water soluble, or so I've been taught. And once water gets in there, I mean, it's not just gonna go for one friction disc, it's gonna saturate all of them and it's only a matter of time before the other ones start to delaminate uh, like the one on the left did. So I'm gonna be just replacing every single one, which unfortunately you guys won't see mostly due in part to the fact that um, it is very difficult to record. It is a very messy process, uh, you know, rebuilding a transmission. You're just coated in transmission fluid the whole time. Uh, I'm lucky that that was the only issue. There's nothing else really wrong with it. There were some aluminum shavings you can see right there, but I think that was due to that failing. So I'm gonna have to diagnose that further. I just got the transmission apart. And since I have the engine and transmission out, I have a lot of room to get in there and clean, so might as well do that now while I have all this extra room. Alright, so first off, I'm just going to go and spray uh, some of this Dawn just soap. A little turkey, it's kind of windy right now. It's kind of over everything. Pick some of that grease and dirt up. Get all this. All right, let's see what we can do. I think that's going to come out looking pretty good. Careful around this. This is hydraulic fluid. Definitely don't want water in there. All right, so there's one pass. You can see there's still some caked on stuff there. The corrosion and whatnot. But oh my, it's looking a whole lot better. Uh, next pass, I'm going to get the hood, too. Can't forget this piece. I want to clean that, too. While I have the pressure washer out, might as well do these. We got a couple other little shields. I think this sits near the power steering rack. It's all covered in grease, probably fire steering fluid. All right, so here's what I have so far. 
the engine cover. We got this uh, pan, which had a little bit of oil residue in there. It's a little bit of leakage. Got some of these air breather tubes. Now I just pressure wash it to get all the grit off. So now when I grab a towel and clean it, it's not gonna scratch the uh, plastic. So with this here, I got the fan and that little thing I just brushed off. And this is part of the intake tube as well. All right, so now I'm going to let the engine bay dry. You can finally see the nice, beautiful subframe. It's got a little bit of uh, some wear and tear on there, but I'm gonna have to get in there with some heavier uh, cleaners. So what do you guys think? This was the before, all dirty, gross, and here's the after. Now it's not spectacular or anything, but I think it looks a whole lot better. So right after I cleaned the engine bay, all of the stuff came for the transmission. I was able to slap it back together put it back onto the engine, and I was able to drop it all back in the car. Now, unfortunately, I didn't record any of this because it, it was pretty late at night and I just wanted to get it done. Um, but here you'll see uh, the day after. So, as of now, the car is unfortunately still not running. Uh, I haven't been able to test the transmission yet because there's two issues that are holding me back. Let me show you. So, if we take a closer look into the engine bay, you may be able to see some stuff missing. Uh, one thing you might notice is the engine cover is not on it. Um, the air uh, tube breather is missing. And there's a little shop towel right here because this is plugging the uh, tube for the EGR valve. Now, I actually had to steal that for the Mercedes over here. Now, the EGR was deleted on this car and now it won't pass emissions, uh, the little device that I had plugged in kind of failed so I thought I'm just gonna put the EGR back in and since the wagon was down anyways I just took the EGR from the wagon and I ordered the part so I can go get my emissions testing done now one of the other things that's really holding me up is the transmission cooler line so the return line the hard line uh, had cracked when I had the engine out so when I first started the engine after I put it back in it pretty much dumped all of its transmission fluid on the ground so what I did was I took the existing fitting off of the radiator and I went to the auto parts store and I found myself some transmission cooler line. Now this is specifically designed for transmission cooler line usage. Now that line right there, this is the line. So that's the tube that I put on and I just took a hose clamp, uh, one of the crimp style clamps and just crimped it right onto the barb. As for the uh, line itself, right now I just have it ran temporarily. I'm still waiting for the other side uh, fitting. Already as well, it is me from the future. Um, we finally have the wagon all put back together. And let me show you that. All right. So let's get in the still dirty wagon. And... Listen to her purr. So, I have the engine back in, I have all the breather stuff back on now, the transmission line is done, and, I mean, it's running pretty darn good. So there's no check engine light, no misfires, none of that. I got the EGR tube back in, which you probably can't see, because the, uh, you can see it a little bit right there. That tube is back in, the intake's kind of blocking it. Transmission fluid's back in, all that good stuff, and so, let's take it for a drive. Here we are on the interior. As you can see, no malfunctions. Everything works. My AC still works. Luckily, I didn't have to bleed that system or the power steering system since I left those two connected to the chassis while I took the engine out. Alrighty, guys. So everything's buttoned up and we're gonna take her on her maiden voyage. Now, hopefully, uh, she will be perfect. So let's start her up. Perfect. No malfunctions anywhere. No lights. So let's uh, take her for a short drive. This is a very comfortable car. Guys, I don't know what else to say. This car just, it's probably the best, most comfortable car I've been in, despite its age, I gotta say. Despite it being 21 years old, it does not feel it at all. The suspension is perfect. 
now that it's fixed in the rear. I inspected everything. There's no issues with any of the ball joints or anything. All the bushings checked out. I mean, I couldn't find any issue with the suspension apart from what I replaced already. This thing just takes potholes like they're nothing. I mean, I don't, we don't really have any big potholes around here, but just going over the manhole cover, there's little dips in the road. I mean, it's not a Rolls Royce or nothing, but I gotta say this actually handles better than my newer W211 E-Class. So while I was in the transmission, I put a new conductor plate, um, filter, fluid, obviously all that stuff. And you saw I replaced the, uh, the friction plates in there. This car just makes me wanna drive the speed limit. I mean, it, it's just so comfortable. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go fast in this thing. I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's just the ride is so enjoyable that there's no need to try to have fun or anything. It's just nice, relaxed, comfy. I almost want to take a nap right here. Now this engine is the M112, which I think is around 220, 230 horsepower, and I mean it still has all 220 or 30 of those horses. I mean it accelerates pretty good. It won't win any races, but I mean, it's definitely faster than your average Honda or any other, you know, cheaper car. And I only compare it to that because I did buy it for $600. So now that we know that the wagon is 100% mechanically good, now we can start working on the cosmetics, fixing up some of the stuff like this, detailing the interior, and a lot more. If you guys stay to the end, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. While you're at it, make sure those notifications are on as well so you don't miss the next wagon video. Thank you all for watching.